This is a brief overview of rheumatoid arthritis with Dr. Manyara. At the end of this discussion, you should be able to define rheumatoid arthritis, explain the basic epidemiology, pathophysiology, presentation and management of rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease where an individual's own immune response is directed against his own body tissues, resulting in inflammation and general destruction of the body tissues. It is the commonest inflammatory joint disease seen in clinical practice. Rheumatoid arthritis affects the joints but may cause inflammation in other tissues including the lungs, the pericardium, the pleura and the sclera. The cause is unknown, but as we have said, the autoimmunity plays a big part in its chronicity and progression. Once the initial immune response is triggered, cells of the immune system produce autoantibodies and inflammatory cytokines that invade and destroy cartilage and bone. Rheumatoid arthritis affects about 1% of the population, that is, in about 100 people, at least one of the persons has rheumatoid arthritis and commonly affect people from the third to the sixth decade affecting mainly women and a positive family history of rheumatoid arthritis plays a big role. So let's move on to presentation. The typical presentation of rheumatoid arthritis is to affect many joints, what we refer to as polyarticular rheumatoid arthritis, but may affect up to only four joints, and this is referred to as oligoarticular or just one joint, probably the knee joint or hip joint, and this is what is called monoarticular rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis affects joints, but as I have just said, it can also be extra articular, meaning that it can affect something away from the joints. It is characterized by a persistent inflammatory synovitis leading to cartilage damage, bone erosions, joint deformity, and disability. This, the small joint of the hands and feet are typically affected. As we have said, it is a polyarticular. So these are the ones that are mainly affected. So patients who present with pain and swelling of the affected joints are aggravated by movement as the most common symptoms. The patients will complain of a morning stiffness lasting for less than one hour. And as we have said, it could be articular or extra articular. So apart from the joints, other tissues may be affected in up to 30 to 40%. Patients are likely to have extra articular involvement if they have high titers of rheumatoid factor, they are male, or probably they have a history of smoking. Extra articular involvement can include the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system. They could also have vasculitis or they have CNS manifestation or central nervous system manifestations and other manifestations in the eye. Rheumatoid nodules are typically about 3 millimeters to a few centimeters in diameter. They are usually found over bony prominences like the olecranon or behind the elbow and can present even if other features of rheumatoid arthritis are absent. So how do you make a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis? Diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis includes both clinical and radiological findings. A person is said to have rheumatoid arthritis if they have four of seven of these findings, with one to four of them being present in at least six weeks for you to say that this person really has rheumatoid arthritis. So the four findings include morning stiffness, arthritis of three or more joints, arthritis of hand joints, symmetric arthritis, rheumatoid nodules, serum rheumatoid factor. Of course, there are other hematological pointers such as an elevated ESR or C-reactive protein, leukocytosis, and anti-nuclear antibodies up to about 30 to 40 percent. And when we talk about the radiological features, by this we mean uniform symmetric joint space narrowing, joint subluxations, joint destructions, and sometimes joint collapse. 
patients with high titers of rheumatoid factor in general tend to have a poorer prognosis and have more extra articular manifestations. Remember also there are other causes of a positive rheumatoid factor like sarcoidosis, systemic lupus, erythematosus, chronic liver disease and infections like TB. So you need to be aware of this as you're doing the rheumatoid factor. So how then do you manage rheumatoid arthritis? Management of rheumatoid arthritis is focused on three things. There is relieving pain, preventing damage or disability, and also educating the patient about this disease. So treatment should be started early and should also be individualized. Patients will present in different, different manners. So treatment will include the medications and also other therapies that we'll talk about just in a moment. So the treatment to start with, the treatment or the medications that you need to give this patient include non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs. You could also give uh, steroids or disease-modifying anti-rheumatic agents, immunosuppressive therapy, as well as surgery. Other therapies should include weight loss, occupational therapy or physiotherapy, as well as acupuncture, which has been known to actually alleviate some of these symptoms. Finally, you need to monitor the disease progression by the duration of morning stiffness, by the reduction of that duration of morning stiffness, how many joints are stiff or swollen, and then of course you can do the ESR and the number of tablets or the, the amount of steroid that the patient needs to have those symptoms down. So basically this concludes this brief discussion on rheumatic arthritis. Do subscribe by hitting the subscribe button so that you get alerts to listen to the other medicine lectures. So until then, goodbye.